In this video, I'm gonna explain the basics of cryptography, specifically how it's used in blockchain technology. All right, so if you're just joining me for the first time, I'm Gregory from Dappy Diversity. On this channel, I teach you how to build blockchain technology. All right, so click the like button down below, click subscribe, and if you wanna become a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about cryptography. And today we're specifically gonna focus on cryptographic hashing, okay, and how that is used uh, on the blockchain. So first, I'll start with just a basic you know, definition of cryptography. What is it? Well, cryptography is really just the practice of uh, securing communication, all right? And you do that through basically hiding information and not showing it to other people and then having a way to reveal that information on the other side of the communication, right? Or to decrypt it in some way. Encrypting it is hiding it, and then decrypting it is you know, reversing that process and showing the original information, okay? So why is it important in blockchain? I mean, you hear about uh, blockchain technology and cryptography kind of go hand in hand. You hear about, you know, cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, right? So there's several different roles that cryptography plays in blockchain technology, okay? I'll go over some of them in depth in this video, but really quickly from a high level, uh, one of the primary ways it plays a role in blockchain technology is keeping it secure, right? So a blockchain is a public network where the data is shared around a across a bunch of different computers, right? Well, how do we make sure that that data stays secure? Well, we use encryption, and I'm going to talk about that in this video, okay? Other use cases uh, for cryptography, uh, specifically cryptographic hashing, is like uh, Bitcoin mining or proof of work uh, consensus mechanisms on any blockchain that uses that, okay? And there's lots of others, but those are a couple that I'm gonna talk about in this video, okay? So both of these uses uh, in blockchain rely on cryptographic hashing, and that's what I'm gonna talk about today in this video, okay? So cryptographic hashing essentially is just taking some information and running it through a process, a function, or an algorithm that turns it into encrypted information, all right? So basically, it's taking something like this, this input, hello world, and hashing it so that it looks like this output right here, okay? And in order to turn it into this encrypted hash, you run it through a hashing function, okay? That's what cryptographic hashing is, all right? I'll go over some of that right now. So a cryptographic hashing function right here on Wikipedia says, it's a mathematical algorithm that maps data of arbitrary size, often called a message, just like I showed you there, uh, to a bit string of fixed size, the hash value, hash or message digest. It's a one-way function, all right, a function which is practically infeasible to invert. So basically the function is an algorithm in which you can put some input, like this message, hello world, into it and it's gonna uh, give you this output and it has several really unique qualities, okay? I'm gonna go over those right now. So first of all, it's deterministic, all right? Anytime I put in this input, hello world, it's going to produce this same output, right? Every single time, right? That's what deterministic means. It works the same way every single time. Um, another property is it's pre-image resistant. You would never be able to guess that this output uh, came from this hello world input. Next, it's collision resistant, which basically means that uh, no two inputs are going to equal this output, all right? Now, it's collision resistant. There theoretically can be collisions uh, with some hashing algorithms, but generally speaking, you won't run into any issues uh, where the two different inputs yield the same output, okay? Another property is that it's uh, computationally efficient, so it, takes, it doesn't take very long for the hashing algorithm to complete. Essentially, you can just, you you know, put an input into it and it'll pretty much instantly spit out the output. And that's what makes hashes useful a lot of times to actually speed up computation. When you're comparing, you know, large data sets, you can just compare the hashes and oftentimes that's a lot faster than comparing all the input data itself. And the last property that I want to highlight is that any slight change in the input will yield a dramatically different output, okay? And that's part of what makes it hard to guess, uh, you know, what the input was. So, for example, you can see this input fox here. You run it through a hashing function and it creates this kind of digest. Uh, then you see this sentence, you know, the red fox jumps over the blue dog. Run it through the hashing function, it creates this output. And then if you just change one single letter, right, you change this V to a U, uh, the outputs look drastically different, all right? So just a small change will, uh, you know, make a completely different output. And that's another property that makes these hash secure, okay? So those are properties of hashing algorithms, and there's several different uh, ones available, right? You can see this list here. There's MD5, SHA-1, SHA-2, SHA-3. Uh, there's Blake-2, Whirlpool, Bcrypt. And I don't necessarily want to go through all of these in this video, but they all uh, share those properties that I mentioned, right? 
And think about why these properties are so important, right? So if you're just trying to figure out how blockchain works, think about a use case that you use on an everyday basis, which is uh, your password, right? Maybe for your email or any kind of online service that you use, like social media, your bank, whatever, whatever, right? So we see this uh, Bcrypt encryption algorithm here. This is uh, developed specifically for password hashing. Um, MD5 was also something that was used a lot for passwords. Uh, So how do they work? Well, essentially... Your password is stored in a database as a hashed output, right? So if your password is ABC123, then that gets run through a hashing algorithm and that's stored in the database. And you don't want to be able to determine what someone's password is by looking at the hashing function. And I also mentioned earlier, you know, that uh, basically it's really hard to guess what the input is from the output. Now that's theoretically. So there are things like called hash tables. You basically take every possible input and, you know, convert that into the uh, hash digest and then look it up in the reverse direction. And this is really common for hackers like with uh, common passwords passwords and things like that. They'll often have these hash lookup tables. So it's theoretically impossible to guess the input from the output, but there are cases when people can do it. So you always need to use secure passwords. <laughs> All right, so let's focus on cryptographic hashing uh, in context of the blockchain. So I'm going to uh, actually do a code example here. You don't necessarily have to be a developer to follow along with this. You can just watch me do it, okay? You'll be able to understand based on what I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to use the Web3 library for talking with the Ethereum blockchain, and I'm going to use the SHA-3 uh, hashing function. So I can say web3 utils and sha3. So I have access to this hashing function right here. Uh, and I'll say hello world, okay? And you'll notice this is the hash that it produces, okay? So I can do this again and just change one letter. Say hello worlds with a you know, S on the end. See, it yields a completely different output. And also one property of this I forgot to mention earlier is that no matter the length of the input, it always yields the same output length, right? So this hello world versus hello worlds, this is one character longer, but the length of the hashes are the exact same, okay? All right, so it's impossible to guess hello world uh, from just seeing this because it looks totally different, right? But that's a way that you have access to a cryptographic hashing function if you're a blockchain developer and you want to use Web3 to play around with this, okay? So let's talk about how uh, blockchain is secured by cryptographic hashing, okay? So what I'll show you is how data is actually stored on the blockchain, okay? So the blockchain is made up of bundles of records called blocks, which are chained together uh, to make up the blockchain, all right? And each block is linked together. That's why it's you know chained together. And they're linked by uh, hashes. Like each block has a hash. So I'll show you that right now. Okay. So uh, I can actually fetch the, a block from the blockchain like this. I'll say Web three uh, ETH uh, get block latest. All right. And then I'll say then R block equals R. All right, so I can look at the block like this, and boom, there we go. There's all the data from the block itself. So let me explain this. Whenever I you know, create a transaction on the blockchain, let's say I send cryptocurrency from one account to another, that's a transaction, okay? And we can see a list of transactions here. These are just the hashes of the transactions, which I'll get into in a minute. But all these hand tra- transactions are bundled together up. These are little records that are bundled up together to create this thing called a block, okay? So this grouping has some data associated with it, okay? And you'll see a hash of this. So essentially, blocks have hashes and transactions have hashes as well. So these are basically all the data that's associated with the transaction itself, like who it came from, who it's going to, the amount of cryptocurrency in that transaction, if it's calling a smart contract function. All that's uh, run through this cryptographic hashing function to create a hash representation of it and you can store it and access the data really quickly that way on the blockchain, okay? And also you can see like the same thing is true. You can take all the data for the block which contains the transactions and a lot of other data like uh, the miner that mined the block, the block number, uh, the parent hash, which is really important. I'll talk about that in a second too. Uh, Lots of other stuff, the size, state root, uh, total difficulty. All that information is also uh, taken and run through a hashing function to produce this uh, parent hash, which you'll see right here, okay? So I can also inspect a transaction like this. I can say we have three ETH get transaction. All right, I can just paste in, you know, one of these transactions on this list, and I can see that data as well. All right, paste it in. All right, there you go. So there's all the data that's associated with the transaction itself. Like I said, you can see uh, who it came from, who it's going to, the amount of gas, gas price, 
Uh, I've got some other videos on how to use Web3.js if you want to see how to build transactions. Just search for Web3.js on my channel and you'll find those as well. Okay, so basically this data can get hashed to create uh, a transaction that looks like this, all right? And then all this data can also get hashed to create a hashed, sorry, run through a hashing function to get another hash that looks like this right here. All right, so this parent hash, right, this actually is the hash of the previous block that came before it on the blockchain. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. Pull up a diagram here. Basically, you saw all that data. So you see some transaction data or some block data, I should say. I'm going to edit this. So some block data. All right. So uh, you have some block data that gets run through a hashing function, okay? And it gets hashed and turned into an actual block on the blockchain, all right? Here's why the blockchain is so secure. And here how's it, here's how it uses these cryptographic hashing algorithms, okay? So it does that for the first block until that block gets big enough to where we need a new block, all right? So essentially, this process gets repeated over and over and over again. I'll take this, copy, and paste it, and move it over. All right, paste it again, move it over. All right, so essentially what happens is block number two, this is one, this is two. This would be so on, so forth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until you have a really big blockchain. Uh, so block number one gets hashed and the parent hash gets included in the next block. All right, so you can see that right here. Here's the uh, parent hash right here, boom. All right, so that's going to have the parent hash, which is included in the same block data right here, right? So that information gets hashed again and turned into this block. And then it goes here, and all of that information gets hashed and then turned into this block as well. So essentially, each block gets the parent hash of the previous block, which is based on data of the previous block and the previous block and the previous block and the previous block and the previous block, okay? Okay. And this is where this is critical in securing the blockchain, okay? So if you were going to go change the history on the blockchain or tamper with it, basically, let's say I had 100 Bitcoin and I wanted to say, oh, now I have 10,000 Bitcoin, right? I wanted to change that. You have to change the blockchain. And this is very hard to do because each block contains the hash of the previous block. And that block contains data which contains the hash of the previous block and the previous block and the previous block. So this is incredibly hard to do and it gets harder and harder and harder and harder and exponentially harder the farther back you go in time, which is why the blockchain is secure. You would have to uh, do a 51% attack, which means you need the compute power of 51% of the entire Bitcoin network in order to change the history of the blockchain. And this, like I said, this problem gets harder and harder and harder the farther back in time that you go, okay? All right, so that's an overview of how cryptographic hashing works. That's how we use cryptography in the blockchain, or at least one way that we do it. I might make some more videos about this topic, uh, other ways in which cryptography is used in blockchain technology. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're interested and you want to see more. Uh, as always, subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the thumbs up button down below. That really helps this video get found. And if you want to become a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.